Dr. Tim, is this like chiropractor Dr. Tim or like PhD Dr. Tim? What's the doctor for? Well, it's not a doctor that can help you, as my mom would say. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, I I take their mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a PhD from UC Santa Barbara uh. in ecology, evolution, and microbial ecology, or marine biology. Okay. And my PhD was specifically on nitrifying bacteria in aquariums. Because you were credited with the guy who discovered it was nitrous and Nit nitrous, nitrous pyra. Not nitrous and not, 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 not nitrous ammonis, right? Okay. All right. I worked with a professor who, who determined, because if you ever took microbiology, you had to grow stuff on petri dish. It was like watching grass grow and it was boring as heck. This guy developed a technique using DNA probes, which are or RNA probes, little snippets of RNA. Uh -huh. And I won't go through the whole thing, but it basically allows you to detect the organisms that are present. Okay. And so I developed these because I was working for marine land aquarium products at the time, and I wanted to know, where do nitrifiers live? A basic, Nin simple question. 1985, 1990? 1990, 1990. 1990. Okay. Well, I started at 90, my PhD in 95. Okay, all right, yeah. just to give us some timeline. Okay, in got 95. it. Keep and uh, so I took my, my, my work and I went to the aquariums, and it all came up blank. All my probes came up blank. And if I went to a sewage treatment plant, they all worked. And so I went to a professor and he goes, well, either you suck as a microbiologist or that's not the answer. They're not there. And I said, well, I don't suck. I don't suck. I, I'm pretty good at this. And so he said, well, who says they're there? Well, Spotty and all the books say they're there. Yeah. Because they're in sewage treatment plants. They right. have to be in aquariums. Okay. Long story short, the whole dissertation took a left field because now I had to find who was there. And that's when I discovered it's nitrospira not nitrobacter. Okay. And it's not nitrous ammonis europea that's the ammonia oxidizer, it's this whole different one. And they're so novel that we are actually able to patent them. A bacteria? Yeah, yep. you can patent bacteria. You can patent a living, yeah. I <laughs> discovered it and I showed utility and I have patents in the US, Australia, Canada, Mexico, and the Europe, EU. Okay, yep. so now you got yep. to evolve to Dr. Tim's Aquatics, you have you know, bacteria in a bottle, not your fine bacteria, which I use to cycle all my tanks. Yeah. You get sludge busters, a yeah. whole range of products. Right. But I started when I was six. I got my first aquarium as a six-year-old. Salt water or fresh water? Well, I started with fresh water. Of course. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then graduated to salt water. And again, my mom uh, dragged me down to Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Dragged my, you. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah, I was terrible. At 13 years old. And she just went into these professors' offices and said, my kid wants to be the next Jacques Cousteau, which is true. <laughs> You're not recording this, are you? Yeah. <laughs> and and I, they had an aquarium there, and I spent the whole day. And these guys and, and women were like, well, you have to get good grades and go to school and study a lot, and you can work here at the beach and study fish. So that was it. Very That's done. all you got to do. <laughs> and the rest is history. Dr. Tim, you and I go way back, I think I made my first video with you in 2010 or 2011 about yep. bacteria in a bottle. People are saying that couldn't work. Obviously it does work. I cycle all your tanks with that stuff. Nowadays, the hot topic is biological tests so you can see the bacteria in your tank and ICP, but you're a little skeptical of these. Tell me why. Well, then I'm skeptical of the application of the test. So like ICP, the issue there is that most of the trace elements that you're measuring, ICP can't detect. They are in salt water, in salt mixes at a lower level than what the test can detect. Period. Period. Yeah, it's, it's not the fault of the ICP test. It's just every test, no matter what it has, just like your home aquarium, it has a zero. But in, in analytical chemistry, it's never zero. It's below detection limits because every test has a lower detection limit. And what a lot of people don't understand is they have an upper detection limit. And that okay. is easily tested with nitrite. Okay. If you have high nitrite, most test kits will give you a false negative, meaning it'll say you don't have any nitrite. Even though it's high. And it's super high because the test 
doesn't have enough reagent to react with the nitrite, so it doesn't work. And you're thinking, oh, this is great. My, my tank's <laughs> nitrite free. Okay. And I did a video on this. You dilute the water and redo the test, and that same water turns deep purple. Mm. Why? Because your nitrite is off the chart. Okay. So tests have a lower limit. They have an upper limit. And you have to measure within that. And in ICP, one, it's misapplied. If you're trying to measure phosphate, nitrate, ICP is not the test. You know, the, the biggest problems are algae, you know, cyano, dino, and that's not related to anything ICP is going to help. No. Not at all. No. no. Is that what it measures? It measures the periodic table. Right. right? So it's measuring all nitrogen. Well, how are you going to know what the nitrate is? You don't. It's measuring all the phosphorus that's in the water. Where did that phosphorus come from? Well, if you, the sample wasn't filtered and you had a bunch of bacteria and stuff like that, that all gets vaporized into phosphorus. So it's measuring that. And there's very few companies, I think of only one, that actually has you filter the water. Yep, filter it and then we kill it, which you said is the other important part, is to kill the sample. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to preserve the sample, filter the sample, and then test the sample. So it's just that there's a misapplication there. And, you know, people send me their ICP test, and for a while, one company was telling people they had mercury in their aquarium. <laughs> yeah. But you send a, an ICP test out to a real lab. Okay. They're going to give you their calibration curve, and they're going to give you the stand. They ran it against a known a standard yep. to see how the equipment's working. Okay. Well, that costs money, that costs time, that costs resources. It can't be done for $49. And do they do that after every test? Do they rerun those standards every test, or is it like a daily calibration? It depends on how many they run. At Marineland, when we were running with our auto sampler, every 50 samples, the machine automatically went back, sampled the knowns, and recalibrated wow. itself. Wow, okay. So you had more confidence in that, in the accuracy there. Yeah, because you're measuring accuracy and precision. Accuracy is you set up some standards and you say it, this is 0.5, and then the next one is 1, and the next one is 2. Mm. Okay? So how accurate does it get to that? Okay? Well, precision is if the test measures this four times, how close is it to 2 every time? Right. And no test is perfect. Sure. So if somebody comes to you and they, they show you some calibration curve or something that's perfectly, you know, one, a, a, a linear regression of one, no, no that, is, that is made up. That just doesn't happen in real life. So then how do we use ICP in saltwater aquariums or does it even need to be used at all? Well, it could be used for some of the major elements, but it, de it depends on what you're trying to figure out. If, if you think you might have a contaminant, it can help. And the other thing is a single ICP test, like most everything else, like a bio, you know, biome test, doesn't tell you anything. Okay. Because it's one point in time. Right. And it, is that good? Is it bad? Is it going up? Is it going down? Right. How is it trending? I mean, if, because if somebody goes, well, I have toxic levels. So there's acute toxicity, and that's everything's dead and everything died quickly. <laughs> well, that's acute toxicity. Yep. Number one thing in aquariums is do you have oxygen? That's a, 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 I used to teach. That's the first thing. What's the most important mm. chemical element in water for your know, fish and corals? Nobody would ever guess oxygen, but it is. You've got to have oxygen. Have oxygen. It's number one, and it's yeah. a chemical element. Yeah. Right? Okay. But Maybe you dropped, you know, something in there. You used a cheap screen and zinc, okay. you know, zinc coated. Yep. You can kill that. You know, zinc is necessary. We, but especially when it comes to corals, is we don't know what the real levels are. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. What's the right level? We don't know for yep. most things. So no, trace elements aren't bad. But in high levels, yes, they can kill things. If things are just sick and one, one animal's dying, that's not acute toxicity. Right. Uh, that's, that's something else. And it, it's, it's very hard to figure out what's killing your animals. And there's often not one thing, and it may be an intersection of things. Yeah. Talking for major elements, you're talking like calcium, magnesium, those are the big things you'd be confident testing with an ICP. Definitely. But yeah. things like how much iron you have in your tank, 
How much I, I, selenium? It, it, it can do iron, it can do selenium. I'm talking about titanium, you see that. Cadmium, cobalt, chromium, chromium things, like things like that. So the idea that came on board a couple of years ago was you can ICP test and then microdose to correct your chromiums, your irons, and things like that. Right, because the company pushing it is trying to sell you the reagents. So do you think the concept is correct, but maybe the testing isn't quite? Well, we the problem test. with the concept is, as I just said, who's to say what the right level is? Well, and in, as you know, in saltwater aquariums, you can do things 30 different ways and reach the same way. Yeah. So well, it may be one, it may be two, maybe five. Right. What are you shooting for? What are people doing? You know, in terms of if you're running a refugia to, to take care of phosphates and nitrates, well, that can be removing lots of things. Yep. And everybody's tanks are different depending <laughs> on what salt you're using. You right. Know? So, so there isn't. I mean, everybody agrees you don't want any ammonia, you don't want any nitrite. Okay, but now how, what's, the perf, what's the perfect nitrate and phosphate level? 2010, <laughs> zero. it was zero. Zero, right? Now we yeah. know that's a problem. Right. So we can't even agree on those which we can accurately measure. <laughs> okay, well now get into hard corals. Well, hard corals are completely different than soft corals when it comes to trace elements and we don't have that information. Do you think there could be any kind of average developed for if you're somewhere in this range, you're good? I think there could be with lots of, lots of trial and error and, and sharing of information. You could get to, yeah, a range. Okay, this is, this is bad, you know, zero is bad. Okay. Just like, you know, like phosphate again. We know zero is bad, but five, 10 is bad too. Right, Yeah. okay. So there's definitely a range. So. What do you feel like the future of ICP is in the industry, if there even is one? How do we use that or do we not use it? No, I think ICP uh, has a role. It's just that it's oversold or is it people that use the, the, buy the test and don't understand its application okay. and they're over-reliant. On it. Yeah, I see yeah. that a lot. With this is where the number is. This is I have to get to here. Yeah. Or it's absolutely accurate, and you're like, well, I, or even does it matter? Because, like you said, we don't know that this ideal you're getting yeah. for is actually right. Or, or the other thing, because people want to, you know, test. Is first thing, is there anything wrong with your tank? <laughs> I mean, that that sounds silly, but you know, what's what is the issue that you have? Or, or you don't like your tank, it's not raging. Okay. You know, whatever raging is. Because you see, you know, one, one person might want just these bright, bright co coral colors. Yeah. Well, that's kind of not natural. Right, certainly in the ocean, it doesn't look like that. No, it doesn't look like that. You've been diving, I've been diving. Yeah. They're not raging fluorescent pinks and purples <laughs> and stuff. So that's, if that's what you want, then maybe these are the values. Okay. If, but. But first, because again, it's all the time, people come to shows, you know, and go, well, you know, what should I do? What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah, you know, and, you know, the, and it's, sometimes it's like, nothing, your tank looks fine. But people think they've got a kibitz. You got to you know, fiddle. You, you got to fiddle touch with it. The, yeah, you got to touch it, it's better. Yeah. And I think anybody that's been in this hobby in long term knows, you know what? Taking a hands off approach sometimes. Letting the tank get in, it takes six to nine months, and then one day, boom, and the tank just looks good, and you're like, I'm not touching it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people tell me they go on vacation, and they come back, and the tank looks better. better. I'm like, Part of that's because you didn't get your hand in there and mess with it. Mess with it.